Hi, thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Amanda, I live in South Australia and I'm the owner and artist of Miasa Creative, formerly Miasa Art. I love to create things that are beautiful to me and that's what my channel is all about, creating some beauty in our world. From furniture upcycles to plants or both, resin art and DIYs, whatever I make it will always be creative and beautiful. You'll also see my fur babies popping in to say hello. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much. Your support means the world to me and I'm happy to have you back. And if you are new to my channel, I'm really happy to have you here and I hope you will consider subscribing and becoming a part of this creative and inclusive community here on YouTube. It's free for you and it means so, so much to me. In today's video, I will be showing you how I turned these outdated nightstands into something beautiful and elegant. So I decided to start filming this when I was already partway through the process. So I had already cleaned, filled, glued, sanded, done all the prep work for these pieces um, and I had also already done two coats of primer and one coat of the paint as you can see here. I'd also already put stencils on the sides and started the texture. So this is where we're starting. I'd already got a little bit done but we will continue from here. So the tops have two coats of primer. I'm going to be resining the tops, so I'm not too fussed about the floors. Um, yeah, there's a couple of little spots there, but that's okay. So here I'm showing you how I mix up the texture that I'm putting on the bodies of the nightstands. Um, I just use some of the paint colour and some baking soda and you can mix that in whatever ratio you want depending on how thick you want your texture to be. I wanted mine pretty thick so I will be adding quite a lot of the baking soda here. And then you just mix it all together, uh, try and get out any of the larger lumps of the baking soda that you don't want. And then I'm just adding the texture. Here I'm adding it to the front. Um, I had already added it to the rest of the nightstands. Um, I was originally going to be putting decoupage paper on these but um, they're, they're too curvy um, and it just, it wasn't gonna work. So I switched my plans and I've decided to go the texture all the way around on them. Um, they turn out really pretty, so all good. So I have a specific brush that I use when I'm putting on texture. It's got a flat, end just makes it a much um, easier for stippling texture on and it's good to either just have a dedicated brush for it or just use an old one because it's very rough on your brushes it will ruin your brush so don't use a really good one and here I'm just showing a bit of a close-up of what it looks like before and after the texture goes on so you can just see there's quite a bit. And now I'm just sanding the texture in the raised stencils that I'd already put on the bodies. Uh, here I'm filming with my phone so sorry it's a little bit um, 
uh, I don't even know what the word is. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it gets better when I get my camera. Just bear with me here. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure that there's no, uh, you know, really rough spots on them. I want them raised, but I don't, I don't want them rough. And same with the texture. I want it there, but I'm just knocking down any of the high points. As you can see here. And it's time for the second coat of paint. So I always just wrap up my brush in some plastic and pop it in the fridge in between coats. Um, I'll give it a good clean out once I'm finished, but it's good to go for the second coat. So my paint is by Mint by Michelle, and it is a 50-50 mix of My Frenchy Blue and The Sound of Rain. And it's it's just oh, it's a stunning color. It it's almost like a chameleon color. It really changes uh, depending on the light. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much of that I actually capture. How much of that you'll be able to see, but in real life, it's it's oh, it's just a beautiful color. Um, Mint by Michelle paints are just stunning, stunning, lovely paints to work with. just getting it on there first so I just go backwards and forwards in the middle and then I go outwards around the edges as you can see me doing there just so you don't get any runs or clumps along the edges I'll just do a final sweep across the whole thing backwards and forwards and then I also just run my fingers along just to be sure that there isn't any excess on on the edges that I've already painted I also numbered all the drawers for these they're very specific where they need to go um, is there a, a Bombay style so that the drawers are very curvy um, I've I've painted the whole all of them so the backs underneath um, just getting a second coat now you can see here where <laughs> I hadn't put the texture on the front yet I wasn't really too sure how to work it in, but anyway, there it is. Um, and it's a Mint by Michelle brush that I'm using. They're really lovely, soft brushes. Uh, and that's my brush for my stippling. So now I'm gonna put another coat on the texture there. Just, a, just the paint, the regular paint over the top of the texture, but I'll still stipple it on to help keep that texture there. showing that it's it's a perfect brush for using it for texture and things like this I'm trying to show you a close-up here oh there we go as well. These were handmade. I'm not, I don't know by who, but they were definitely handmade and um, I thought they would benefit with paint inside. 
So this is how we're looking after the second coat. So that is the first layer that I did. I did three layers total of resin so that um, you get more depth and a, and a better end result um, when you do multiple layers. So the first layer I lay down the colours and the lines and the way that I want them to show through uh, the final layer. So that's why they're quite thick. but. As I did the second layer and then the third layer, it mutes them down a lot. You can still see it shining through, but it just makes uh, the whole effect more realistic at the end. And this is the only footage that I managed to get of all three pores that I did. Um, so here I'm just popping any bubbles and warming up the resin a little bit and then I'll just spread it out to where I want it with my hands. I would normally use nitro gloves for this but this is what I had so that's what I used. just move it around a little bit with the heat gun. I will be doing more resin pours so uh, I will, now that I've got a bit more of a handle on my camera, um, I will do more detailed um, footage next time. So I'm just moving it around a little bit here just to soften any lines this second layer was quite transparent so and that's how the second layer turned out and then this is the third layer and now we are removing the drips so satisfying i love removing the drips you just Heat it up with a heat gun. This has been curing for two days now, um, but as you can see, the drips come off very easily if you heat it up first. Oh, so satisfying. Sorry, the heat gun's a bit in the way in this one. But still, you can see that's a lovely line there. All drips gone. And then this is the front. It was a bit blown out. I'm still working with my camera and you know the angles the right ways and things like that so that'll take me a little bit it's a bit of a learning curve but I left it in because you can still see the drips there and you can still see the tape coming off
so even though I did get the majority of the drips off because that is a textured area the resin did still seep under the tape um, oh, resin will find a way <laughs> it is yeah uh, you're gonna have touch-ups that you'll need to do um, it's very easy to fix up just a bit of sandpaper I used 180 grit and you just sand all the resin that you don't want and make sure that there's no little sharp edges anywhere and that they're all nice and cleaned up a good idea to wear a mask at least a dust mask when you're sanding resin and here's the first look of that beautiful glassy resin top we need to touch up any areas that we've sanded um, and make sure that it's all nice and tidied up under there. So I'm just going around first with the regular paint. up some more texture to fix up any spots underneath it's very hard to film this <laughs> um, but yeah as you can see I'm just dabbing the texture on with a smaller more detailed brush so I can make sure I'm getting it where I want it's very easy to wipe off the resin if you do slip. And here's a quick look at where they are now. They're beautiful resin tops. So you can still see that lower layer shining through just adds so much depth when you do multiple layers just makes it look a bit more realistic there's all the texture all fixed up it's still a little bit wet it's pretty fixed up there Decided I wanted to put the raised stencil on the drawer fronts um, to match the ones that I put on the cabinets. So I'm just using the stencil is Diamond Flourish, I think, from Redesign with Prima, and I've just cut this little section off. So I used that larger section that you can see there on the sides of the nightstands. And then I'm just using the smaller part to put on the corners of the drawers. And I am using a mix of my paint and some wood filler uh, to the consistency of, I guess I would say like a brownie batter. And just wiping that on the corners of each of the drawers. Oops, dropped a bit there. It 
wipes off really easily when it's still wet. This is how they're looking and now I'm going to give them a bit of the sand just to remove any of the little extra braised bumps. I'm using a 240 grit sandpaper for this and just be gentle with it. gilding wax. It's just a mix of a gold metallic mica powder with my furniture wax. And I'm just painting the details on. I want these details to be quite defined so I chose to paint it on rather than just putting it on with my finger. And there they are, looking very pretty. to do the same with the braised stencils on the cabinets themselves. So you can definitely just do, do this part with your finger if you want. It would be much quicker and easier. This did take me quite a long time, but um, I think the result was worth it. softer and less defined and you also risk getting it in places where you might not want it to be with the brush you've just got a lot more control about where it's going the thing with your finger because you don't have as much control you can easily go somewhere that you don't want it um, 
if that does happen as long as you've clear waxed first always clear wax first whenever you're using any gilding waxes or dark waxes or anything like that um, so if you do go out and get it somewhere that you don't want it you can just take some of that clear wax and use it as a, an eraser pretty much you can just remove the coloured wax from wherever you don't want it to be just resin mica powder um, obviously I have a lot of resin colorants and things because I've done resin for a long time this one is an interference gold um, but you can use any mica powder to do this you just um, mix your powder with your furniture wax and you can do any color you like I really like Fusion's Furniture Wax for this. It's just a lot softer than some of the other waxes and it just makes it so much easier to mix the mica powder into it. Um, but yeah, just uh, do it slowly <laughs> because as you'll see shortly, it will go everywhere. It's very, very fine. Try not to breathe it in. slow and just keep gently smooshing the mica powder into the wax until it's fully incorporated. with a little bit more clear wax to reduce the pigment if you want less of it. my piece um, which 
So I did reduce down the pigment amount. I added a bit more of the clear wax to the mix. And you can see me adding it here. It's just a very subtle shimmer and it shifts in the light. And it just looks really pretty over a textured finish like this. So this will also be my final seal coat because it's mixed into the wax and it won't, it won't stop the wax from being able to cure. As you can see really clearly there how pretty it is in the light and how it shifts. bottom part there yet so hopefully you can see the difference there where it is and where it's not and now we've finished doing this one so I'm just doing a quick overview you can see how it's shifting it's really really pretty in real life very subtle that they came with and I'm just giving them a bit of a clean so I'm just popping them in a bucket Just soak them in vinegar overnight. This is the next morning. And that's how they're looking coming out of the vinegar. And just give them a good scrub with a toothbrush and some super fine steel wool. Cleans them up beautifully. Then I just put a little bit of my gold gilding wax to finish them off so they match the gold on the rest of the pieces. It's very easy to do, just put a little bit on your finger and rub it on.
and they're getting their jewelry this is always good when you're putting the handles on you know you're nearly at the finish line They look so pretty. Hello. Okay, so here they are. All done. They've turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love them. Mm -hmm. um, so let me talk you through everything that I did because I only decided to start filming halfway through the process. So you missed a lot of the beginning. Um, so I did the usual, gave them a good clean. Uh, patched up any problem areas, wood glue, wood filler, all that kind of thing. Um, I did then two layers of primer. I just used uh, Zinza 123 water-based primer. And then I did two coats of this beautiful blue colour, which is um, a 50-50 mix of two of Mint by Michelle's colours. I did show them earlier in the video. Um, then I did the texture and I showed you how to mix that, how I did that. Uh, then I did another just paint coat over the texture. Um, then we did the resin. So we've got these beautiful resin tops. Unfortunately I didn't film all of that. So um, bear with me while I'm learning my camera. <laughs> it turned off on me on every single one. So I only got little bits here and there. Um, it's a new camera, so I'm still trying to work out, you know, how it all works. Oh, hi, Lucy. This is Lucy. This is my little girl. She wanted to be in the video. Um, okay, so three layers of resin. Um, I will be doing a lot of resin. My background is resin. I've been doing resin art for about seven years. Um, so I will be doing a lot of mixing and matching things. So resin tops on furniture. Um, I also have a passion for plants so I've got a couple of uh, plant cabinets and I have another one that I'm going to be doing soon, uh, that kind of thing. So you know I might bring some interesting new things into the mix. Um, Alright where was I? Okay what did we do next? I did the stencils on the side, you didn't see those but you did see me do the ones on the drawers. Um, so they've turned out really pretty. Then I did a, just a interference gold mixed in with my wax to give all the texture a little bit of a goldy shimmer. Um, then we put the, the handles on and here they are. Uh, they will be up for sale in my area in Adelaide. Um, and yeah, they will be going to some lucky person in South Australia. So, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please bear with me while I, you know, learn my camera and learn editing. I will get better at it, I promise. <laughs> um, and I will give you some glamour shots now. You guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.